Hi, it's V, and welcome to my new IGTV series, which is called Ingredients In. In each episode, I'm going to look at one or two products from the same brand or products from different brands but contain like the same key or star ingredient and look at the science behind those ingredients and why they are beneficial in terms of your skin. I'm going to leave links in the description box to articles that back up the science side of things and I just want to be very clear in the fact that I'm never going to mention skincare that I have not tried myself. So at the end of each episode I'm going to be giving a little review or my thoughts on the products that I've mentioned in the episode. This episode features two products that are from a brand called Axis Y. They are gifted to me, so I did not spend money on them myself. And I have worked with Axis Y in a previous gifted collaboration, which I have a blog post about. They're a brand that I like, even though not all products work for me, as their target demographic is oily and acne prone skin in humid climates, but they are vegan and cruelty free, and they are also really, really open to customer feedback. So I'm happy to be working with them again. The two products that I have from Access Y are the Dark Spot Correcting Glow Serum and the Complete No Stress Physical Sunscreen. And the way that this episode is going to break down is I'm going to be talking about the four different power ingredients across both products. And then I'm going to give my thoughts on how each of these products is working for my skin currently at the end. So. In the Dark Spot Correcting Glow Serum, we have niacinamide, 5%, we have squalane and hippopay rhamnoids fruit extract. And in the Complete No Stress Physical Sunscreen, we have mugwort, niacinamide, 2%, and squalane. There are other ingredients in these formulas, but these are the four that Axis Y advertise as their star ingredients, so those are the ones that I'm going to be focusing on. So let's get on to the ingredients. We'll start with niacinamide because even though it's at different percentages, it is included in both products. Niacinamide is a form of vitamin B3, which is an essential nutrient for your body. If you do not ingest enough vitamin B3, it can cause some really nasty disorders to do with your brain, your kidneys, and your skin. But that is through ingestion, and really, the only way that you're not getting enough B3 in your body is if you have are if you have absorption issues related to your digestive system or you're currently suffering from alcoholism. So if that's not you, I wouldn't worry too much, but if you are worried about having a vitamin B3 deficiency, go check it out with your doctor. You cannot become vitamin B3 deficient from not having enough in your skincare. Niacinamide is used topically, so that's like applied to areas of your skin to help with skin conditions such as eczema, which is something that I suffer from, psoriasis and acne. At a base level, niacinamide helps to prevent environmental damage on your skin by helping promote the growth of ceramide. Ceramide is the lipids or the fat that make up your skin barrier, as well as helping to build keratin, which is a protein that is important to keep your skin firm and healthy. Niacinamide has emollient properties, so it really locks in the moisture and it can actually act as a hydration booster um, to really help the moisturizing properties of different skincare products after you've applied niacinamide. Niacinamide is also an anti-inflammatory ingredient, so it helps to reduce and soothe irritation, especially around wound sites. Once again, that's playing into the eczema and acne side of things. And it also helps to regulate oil production. Uh, niacinamide also has sun protection properties by helping to promote rebuilding healthy skin cells. And it's also an ingredient that is good for all skin types. So if you're oily, if you're dry, if you're combination, if you are mature, if you are still quite young, it's good for your skin. Next up is squalane, as it's another ingredient that is present in both products. Squalane is an oil and it is the more stable version and therefore the more common version of squalene. Squalene is naturally produced by our own skin, although the production does decrease rapidly as you get older. Squalene for skincare is found in both plants and animals, so plant-derived squalene is from things like brown rice, olives, and sugarcane, and animal-derived squalene is from shark liver. So it's really important to make sure if cruelty-free and vegan is something that you look for, that you are looking for plant-derived squalene. Axis Y is a cruelty-free brand, so their squalene is plant-derived, not animal-derived. Squalene in its plant or animal-derived form is really quite unstable. It can be comedogenic for some skin types, that means it clogs your pores, 
and it also spoils quickly so it is changed into a much more stable form called squalane by a process of hydrogenation. Hydrogenation changes the unstable, unsaturated oil that is squalene into a much more stable, saturated oil which is squalane. Squalane is almost identical to our skin's own squalene, so when you apply it topically, the skin responds to it really, really quickly. It is a type of ingredient called an adaptogen, which means that it changes to what your skin needs at any specific moment in time. So if you are dry skin type, it can help reduce your dryness. If you're an oily skin type, it can help reduce your oiliness, etc, etc, etc. Squalane in its stable hydrogenated form is non-comedogenic, so it is suitable for all skin types. It's an emollient, so it helps retain all that moisture in your skin. It is rich in antioxidants, so it helps to repel free radicals that are floating around the air around us that can react with molecules in our skin's barrier and damage them. Squalane also stimulates skin repair and it is a great anti-inflammatory, so again, great for acne prone or inflamed or reactionary skin. Let's move on to, and I need to read this because I can't pronounce it, Hippohe, Hippophe, Ramnoids Fruit Extract, otherwise known as sea buckthorn. If they'd have just put sea buckthorn on the tube, I would have been like, oh, I know what that does rather than having to Google it. But hey, sea buckthorn. Um, it's also known as sea berry and it is a fruit. It is a great source of vitamin C, vitamin B and vitamin E. Vitamin C and vitamin E are great to use for wound healing and skin nourishment. And vitamin B has been shown to help produce healthy skin cells. Sea buckthorn is also rich in antioxidants. And as we know, that helps to repel free radicals that can react or destabilize certain molecules in the skin's barrier when they come into contact with each other, which can damage your skin. Sea buckthorn also has soothing properties, so any redness, any itchiness, any broken skin, any inflammation, stick it on and it will soothe. Um, it also boosts elasticity and hydration. And finally, it fights acne causing bacteria. So it's great if you are acne prone. Okay, so let's move on to the sunscreen. It is a complete no stress physical sunscreen. A physical sunscreen is a sunscreen that creates a barrier on your skin to reflect um, the sun's UVA and UVB rays. It doesn't absorb into the skin, it sits on top and bounces all that light away. There are three types of sunscreens. There's physical, there's chemical, and there's hybrid. Chemical absorbs into the skin, so it absorbs UVA and UVB rays, and it reacts with them and kind of like creates heat, and the heat dissolves into your skin and hybrid sunscreens are a mixture of the two. It is SPF 50 plus and PA plus 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 and it has niacinamide which we've already gone through and squalene which we've already gone through and the last ingredient is mugwort. I love mugwort so much. It's a great, <laughs> it's a great ingredient. It's wonderful. Uh, mugwort is an ingredient in skincare that I love. In Korean it is suk and you can find it in a lot of food, in a lot of beverages, and in a lot of traditional medicine. Um, it goes by a few different names, but the one that is most common other than mugwort is Artemisia extract, as that's kind of like the um, Latin name. Mugwort is on my love it list for a number of reasons. <laughs> it's an antibacterial and an antifungal, so it is great for fighting acne. It is an anti-inflammatory, so it soothes and promotes healing of a compromised or damaged skin barrier. It is packed full of antioxidants to help prevent free radical damage and has lots of vitamin E to help protect and nourish your skin. It's a wonderful ingredient and is another one that is great for all skin types. So those are the ingredients and now I'm going to give you my thoughts on these two products. I'll start with the dark spot correcting glow serum as that would be first in the skincare routine. It is the first time that I've actually used a product with niacinamide or squalane in it. I've used um, sheet masks with sea buckthorn in it so I know that my skin really likes that. And I've been really pleasantly surprised at how much my skin has actually really, really liked this. I suffer from dryness and eczema related dryness on varying parts of my face, <laughs> which sucks, but it's how I live my life and this has really helped when I've applied it in those areas specifically. I haven't noticed any dark spots being corrected. I don't really have any dark spots or hyperpigmentation on my face so I can't account for that but I have noticed that my skin seems more glowy, it does seem more hydrated and it does seem a lot less dry in those areas that I do have trouble. 
So this is something that I would highly recommend even if you are not particularly oily or acne prone. I'm not. I am more combination. I err on the side of combination dry. Um, but this serum doesn't really care what your skin type is and I genuinely think it will help for a lot of different skin types. Moving on to the sunscreen, I have had so many... I have had so many problems with different sunscreens. I genuinely think they are one of the products that are essential in a skincare routine, but for someone with very sensitive skin like me, they almost always break me out. Or they almost always irritate my eczema, which is the worst thing because as someone with eczema, when it gets really, really bad, I have to use like hydrocortisone, which is a steroid cream, and steroid creams thin your skin, and then that makes it all more susceptible to sun damage. So finding a sunscreen that doesn't inflame my eczema is like finding gold dust and I've been loving this. It goes on really easily, it doesn't feel sticky, it doesn't smell chemically, it sits really nicely on my skin, it sits really nicely under makeup and I haven't felt greasy, I haven't felt like I'm definitely wearing sunscreen, it is pretty much exactly what it says on the top. It is complete no stress sunscreen and it is something that I have been looking for in my life. Um, I never go outside without wearing this now and honestly I think that it is the first time that I can say that I love a sunscreen. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you XSY for sending me these products. Let me know what products or ingredients you'd like to see me look into next. If you like this, share this with a skincare loving friend or you know, leave a comment and a heart. And I shall see you in the next one. Bye bye.